Hello everyone, this is Dival20 and welcome to episode 17 of Forgecraft, where today I am ramping things up. That is the plan. I'm going to build a 7x7 fission reactor. 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. Seems like a bad idea. But we're going to do it. We're going to go big or go home. Uh, TLDR is I want my polonium to come in faster. Because not only do I need polonium for making the armor, but all the upgrades that the mechanism armor needs also needs polonium. right? So that's a thing that we're going to need to be aware of. So as a result, I need lots more polonium. And I said to myself, boy, this fission reactor is really slow. I would like to speed it up. So short of any uh, options for tick accelerating, which we do not have in this pack at all. Boy, do I hope I brought enough stuff because I feel like I masked out how much I need. And now I'm wondering, did I math out how much I need? I mean, I do have a lot more, so I'm good. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. That feels pretty good. Building giant multi-blocks is definitely easier with flight. I'm just saying. Mechanisms like, no flight for you until you build giant multi-blocks. And I'm like, but then I won't need flight anymore. I mean, who am I kidding? I'm going to still want flight. But, you know. We'll see what happens. So this is going to be my new big fission reactor. Hooray, I kind of did it right. I know I made a few extras. That's okay. That's okay. And I'm pretty sure these are all tile entities, right? Yes, everything in here is a tile entity, so no building gadgets for it. Though, I am I really want to see if I can make it so that building gadgets um, supports tile entities in the future, but no promises there yet. And more reactor glass, please. Cool. Now, we want a checkerboard pattern with our control rod assemblies. So I hope I mathed this correctly, but it's going to be one, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. And we're going to use the same turbine, maybe. Did I make too many of these? I might have made too many of these, to be honest with you. But that's okay. I'll live. We'll use them in our next fission reactor. I think I just realized I mathed this wrong, but we'll find out if I'm correct about that. Maybe I didn't math this wrong. Did I math this correctly? Dire, please. No, I totally mathed it wrong. I made a few extra. Not the end of the world, though. Sorry, nobody on my stream caught me. Nobody on my stream noticed. Nobody said, hey, Dyer, that's too many. So are you, like, happy now? You should be pretty happy. Am I missing something in here? I mean, I don't have any ports or nothing yet. I think I needed one port. Yes, I absolutely needed one port. All right, well, that's cool. I can handle that. So now your ultimate fluid cabling should start filling up nice and lickety split. Nice, look at that, beautiful. All right, and I want this thing to be closed loop again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you also be an input for water. Okay. Um, and this is looking nice and big. I like how big this looks. I think it's super cool. Now, we're totally going to want the nuclear waste stuff to come into here, right? That's one that I want you. I think I can... I think it probably needs to come out here, right? 
So you're going to be my nuclear waste out guy. Output waste with pressurized tubes. And I'm not going to hook that up just yet because waste and breaking. If I decide I need to change something, it's going to be a bad time, right? But I want this thing to fill up with water, right? Um, we'll eventually connect that up, but we want this guy to fill up with water nice and quick. He's pumping as fast as he can, and boy, is that not fast enough because you're going to hold a lot of water. Like you hold, yeah, you're going to hold a lot of water for your size, but that's okay. Um, and then we're also going to want probably, let's do this will be the fuel in. And I've got some fuel in ready to go. If it's not in my inventory, I'll get it in a sec. But your ultimate pressurized tube will go there. So that's going to be fuel goes in. And we're just going to have to see if we can make this be hot enough to make lots and lots of nuclear power stuff. So that'll be the fuel in for this guy. How's that looking? Not bad. Filling up the water slowly but surely. So fuel in, and then we're gonna want steam out. So that's gonna be this one here. So I'm gonna line this guy up to basically this, right? Give me another fission reactor port, please. And that's gonna be our steam output. Cool, and that'll be a universal cable. No, pressurized tube, yes, that one. I know what I mean. There you are. And let's make sure that your output coolant, pressurized tube, cool. That shouldn't affect this at all. And that all sounds good. And what we're gonna wanna make sure of is that, you know, the turbine's gonna be able to handle the amount of steam that I'm making over here. Hopefully the answer is yes, sir. Um, that looks good. Oh man, look at all the good stuff I mined up. All right, you're gonna go here and your sidedness will be such that you can also output to the top. So you should be getting fissile fuel now. I'll be curious to see how much you can handle. Uh, looks like a lot more than the 64 millibuckets or 64 buckets worth that uh, the other one had. Definitely a lot more. Definitely a super duper a lot more. At some point, I'll quantum entangle over all this stuff, but for now, I'm kind of just playing and learning and being careful. I don't want to leave anything running when I'm not on because, I mean, Soren's going to come over here and push buttons. We all know that, right? Like, that is absolutely what we know will happen at some point. So we want to be prepared for said eventuality, right? Let's make you a thing that I can make. Can I have 10 more patterns? Yeah, without too much fussing. Just in case I feel like making all these guys too, right? Now, you're nice and empty already, but you may or not. We'll see. Give me the ultimate. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. All the crafting's happening. That should be cool. Now steam is a gas, so we can't void it, right? Unless there's a gas void, which I doubt. I mean, actually you can void it because you can void through the tanks, right? Now you're processing one of these. Are you out of diamonds again? No, you're out of refined obsidian. Yes. I did make the stuff for that. I just didn't put it in here yet. Still super duper need to get around to automating that. But now we have a nice tank. That's ultimate -y. Night has passed. Good morning. And then chemical tank can come over here and handle all this stuff. Yay. All the fissile fuels. I also added speed accelerators to all these things. I should add uranium to my stuff. And I should also have like an export bus of fluorite. There's a few things I need to like automate in here a little bit better than I have thus far, but it's all good. I need more coal and I need more uranium. 
for the record. So I'm gonna go add those to my digital miner. I've been digital mining slowly but surely the actual resources I need, right? Um, so that's all cool. Okay, so let's stop reset config, new filter tag, forge or is coal, save. Forge ores uranium. Save. And I'm hoping that includes nuclear craft uranium. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on silk touch mode so that I can get my coal, you know, a good way. Yeah, mechanism uranium is showing up, so that's good news too. And then I can do the thing, right? Now you're still making 22,000 RF a tick, which is still pretty slick. Still pretty slick. But yeah, basically the manual inputs that I need to do is coal goes in here. I wanna know why I have speed. Did, did Soren set up a beacon? Cause it's very annoying to me that my field of view keeps changing all the time. Things that probably bother just dire, but my field of view keeps changing and it's super annoying to me. I'm gonna go to Soren's base and see if he set up a beacon, because 10 to 1 says he did. And I'm sure he put it somewhere stupid where I'm not gonna be able to find it forever. Soren's base. Why am I getting speed if it's not a beacon? What else would be giving me speed with a field of view modifier like that? It's not the s'mores snack, is it? I don't think so. I've been getting that ever since. Ah. Do you want to know where it is, I think? Do you think you know where the beacon is? Yeah, I think it's under the wayside. Oh, is it? Oh, I see it. I do see it. You're right. Yeah, I keep getting my field of view changed, and it's super annoying. <laughs> I like it. I mean, the problem is, is it's like where I'm working. It's like super annoying because I keep going in and out of the range. So like every time I go in and out of my base, my field of view changes. And I'm just like, mm. There he goes. He can have it back later. Yes, thank you, CBW. <laughs> All right, so that guy should no be filling up with water. We should be getting more uranium now too, which is cool. And coal, for that matter. Yeah, buddy. That's what's up. All right. So you're sitting at close to 100 millibuckets. Or 100 buckets worth. That's not bad. We got a little bit more uranium, but we could do with more. You export bust this, right? You should be. Yes. You're just processing all the iron from before. Right. Makes sense. Do you also dump immersives uranium? It doesn't look like you are. You could be, though. Right? Or no? Yeah. Seems like it. We'll need another export bust guy on this, I think. To properly handle it all. Beautiful. Okay, there comes all the uranium ores now. That's a good time. What he's really waiting for is more coal at this point, but we'll deal with that later. For now, let's just get this reactor up and running, which should be no problem. 
All right, so you've got a good amount of water coming in at this point, right? Um, what I'm going to want to do is add... I don't want to add too much here, but I do. But I don't, but I do. So once I activate this guy is when I'm going to activate the water thing. So let's activate him now and see how he goes. He should be at point 0.1. Oh, his max burn is 52 millibuckets per tick. That is way higher than the max burn of this, which is 1. So this is 50 times faster, technically 52 times faster. At least it's capable of 52 times faster. That is cool beans right there. So he should be producing steam at a pretty hefty rate, right? Now he's gonna start building up water at some point, but that's okay, because we're gonna add the mechanical pipe here, which should start helping with that. I just wanna make sure this guy doesn't get low on water. Yeah, see, he's getting low on water and that's bad. We don't wanna let that happen. Right, that's a bad time right there to let him get low on water. Yeah, definitely don't let this run out of water. That would be a bad time for literally everyone. We would all be in very bad shape if that happened. What I might do is just turn this one off. I mean, he's got a little fuel in there. I don't wanna break this, but what I could do is get my other tank and fill this up. So now he should have some fissile fuel in there. Yeah. And he's still running, but I'll let him run until he burns out all that fuel. And then we'll hold off on him. And this guy's going to be my buddy. Yeah. So he can definitely go up to like, let's do two, right? So that's just going to be problem with water. But if we scram him, that should stop. And that's cool. And his cooling off is going to happen. You're going to come with me, buddy. Now you're also producing um, some some waste stuff, right? So if I connect my pressurized tube here, that should be pretty valid. Cool. Okay, feeling good about this, right? Um, so what I need to do is get more water piped into here. This guy's gonna burn up all his fissile fuel. I don't know what happens if I tell this to go higher than one. I just assume that's bad. Either it's not gonna let me or bad things will happen. I just don't know. And I don't wanna test it because radiation is bad, but if this thing explodes, I think it's like, you know, big boom, big bada boom, boom. So we don't want that either. So I'm gonna let all the fissile fuel burn out here. And then I'm gonna flip this guy over um, so that all the water can go into this guy from the turbine. And then we'll kind of figure it out from there. How's that sound? So let's come back in a minute once this guy's fissile fuel is gone. You know what I could do is I could just scram this right now. Temperature go down. Goodbye temperatures. Let's hook this dude up. So he shouldn't be using any water at this point. And then we can activate this guy with a burn rate. He's currently at two is his rate limit, right? Um, and our goal is to figure out like how high can I make this without it being a problem? So what if we made it five, right? We're still getting water, that's good. You seem to be handling that just fine. 114,000 forage energy per tick, 15. I saw the water drop in there and I was like, <gasps> and then it was okay. It was okay. We're still okay. We're still okay. We're still okay. I really did panic there a little bit though. I'm not going to lie. There was a little bit of panic. So water drops when you increase the burn rate because it real quick uses a bunch of coolant, but then it stabilizes because it starts flowing in from our steam over here. Right? So we're still stable in terms of water, like we're still net gaining on water because we're, we're a closed system with the, with the steam turbine and we're getting water from the pump, right? So that's a good thing. We have a net gain on coolant, right? 
So then I should be able to bump this guy up to 25, and he will, again, use a big burst of coolant to get us up to the right temperature. And then we want to keep an eye on the steam turbine, right? Because that's going to be an important thing, right? Max production is 1.17 million. Max water output is 1 million millibuckets or 1,000 buckets per tick. We're currently at half that. We're currently at half that, right? So what's interesting is a is a rate burn of 25 is about half of what this is capable of. So I want to say this thing, this this size, which is not a big turbine, but this turbine is capable of doing about exactly as much as my seven by seven by seven, just a little bit under, because I think 50 is going to be where we got, we're going to wind up, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can see that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an accurate assessment. So let's bump this guy up to 35. And again, big burst of water usage. We still even see the water drip in the tank, but most of it is being turned into steam and being put over here. So now I should be able to come over here and do 40. Activate that. That is cool beans right now. Cool. And you'll notice my waste tank is constantly empty. That's a good thing. What I should check is this waste tank, right? How's, how's you doing? 14% full. Okay. And hey, we've got eight polonium pellets. So that's actually really cool. Look how fast we're producing polonium right now. Are you keeping up? Solar neutron activator having no problem with 44 millibuckets per tick of nuclear waste. Not even a little bit of a problem. You're doing just fine over here, fissile fuel. I'm understanding the math now, and it's all working out for me, right? So realistically, 50 is about where we're going to want to be, right? But I'm going to make it 45 which is gonna be a little bit of room for margin of error, right? And we should be okay here because we're voiding the energy, but we're producing a million RF a tick, which I'm just trashing in a trash can because that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the nuclear waste. That's what I want. I want nuclear waste. I don't want power. I'm doing this for nuclear waste reasons because <laughs> ultimately I want polonium. Hey, cyanide's coming to check out my stuff. What's up, cyanide? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, we're out of fuel. Oh, okay, cool. No, that's fine. Okay, yeah, no, everything's shut down because we're out of fuel. But that's pretty neat. Hello, sir. How do you like it? How's it going? Oh, not too bad. I see you have two reactors here. Well, I built the small one first, right? And I'm going to activate him again so that he starts... He should not be losing all his water. Oh, he is. I know why. Hold on. Scram that. Oh, you don't have a vent coming in? Uh, I do, but it's currently split. Oh, okay. I'm splitting it between the two reactors. I forgot that. It should stabilize now and be good. And true. Cool. All right. Yeah, so I'm... Uh, I built the small one, and then I realized how incredibly slow my polonium production was going to be at that speed. And yeah. so I said, well, I need to make a bigger one. So I made a second. Yeah, might as well. This is a good size. Yeah, it really is. And like this size fission reactor, 7x7x7, seven by seven by seven, is about what this turbine can do. And I think, how many blades do you have here? Is it 10? Oh, 8? Uh, 8, yeah. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... I think, yeah, you're just missing a couple vents on this side for yeah. max efficiency. So I, I went with, there's a there's an FDB wiki article on like making an efficient reactor and I went with the sizing and stuff that they recommended. Yeah, I think Aiden actually updated the, uh, the turbine. Yeah. Oh yeah, one second. I went he with the Aiden. first entry on that, most efficient structures with five height nine. That's what I went with. Oh, I see where you went. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll, I can link you to this one as well, which is, he wrote down here somewhere, I think he said there's an ideal size for it. Oh, okay. Uh, I was looking at that, but I like this one because it told me the counts. It's like, make this many of this item. Right. I think it is somewhere. I don't know where it was, but you know what? You're pretty close enough to the most efficient anyways. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's super close. 
So now I just need to ramp up my production of uh, nuclear waste, which, uh, I mean, I've got some more fissile fuel, so I can turn this back on, actually. I'm going to scram this dude so that he doesn't run. I can't believe you're doing this without a hazmat suit. You're brave. Am I? Some would call it stupid. Well, I'm the king of stupid. <laughs> yeah. I've only had two nuclear accidents so far. That's it. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah, I've had two. I was trying to figure out like how to get steam out, and like I accidentally let some nuclear waste into a pipe because I thought steam was coming out that pipe, but it was nuclear oh. waste. So like a tiny, yeah. tiny bit and got out. And then, yes, that was a mistake. Um, and then the other thing I did um, was I broke a solar neutron activator that was done running, yeah. but had like a tiny little bit left in there. I know. I, I've done that too. I think what I do is I let it fill up to max and then I cut the pipe off and right. then I run it full and it will be an even split. So it empties completely. Yeah. So I yep, think I'm safe dangerous. right now. Like, my coolant tank is not full, but it's enough, right? Coolant tank doesn't have to be full, does it? Nope. No, and it'll, as long as it's not going down in your initial run, it'll be fine. Yeah, and I it, think it goes down learn... a lot when I turn it on, because it basically, like, instantly turns everything to steam, and then the yeah. steam's in there. Um, and if I turned this off, all the water that is currently steam would turn back into water. See, all the water comes mm -hmm. back. Um, but I'm going to activate it, and all that water turns into steam right away, but we're good. Yeah, the key thing is uh, if you you can slowly increase your burn rate by 0.5 over time, and it'll be more efficient and safer than just jumping right up to 100. Oh, okay. Well, I did like and five buckets at a time, so I'm up to 45 right now. This guy's max is 52, but based on what I'm seeing with the turbine, I think it can only handle 50. So I'm not going to go above right. 45. I'm going to keep it at 45. Another so, good idea is having a buffer of water, like a huge dynamic tank of water. Yeah. Just so, you know, you can actually crank it at the beginning and it will empty all of the dynamic tank into here first. Oh, okay. And then that's a good way if you want to get started quicker. Nice. So once, oh, yeah. once the polonium is in pellet form, it's safe, right? It is. Nice. So I think I can make my mechanism suit body armor now. Well, wow, that's pretty quick. Yeah, not too shabby. Except I need netherite, which I don't have netherite. I don't even know. I don't even remember. I'm, I would yeah, imagine I can just bring my, my, my mechanism miner into the nether and make that a thing real quick. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That would be the easiest way for sure. Yes. It is the super OP way of doing it. <laughs> Is this thing out of power? Is that what's happening? Oh, yeah, he is. Look at that. How adorable. All right. Step one, charge him up. Step two, bring him into the nether to get power. Well, I will leave you uh, be. Looks like you're doing well over here. Thanks, buddy. Stay yeah, safe. no, I'm getting the hang of it. I think I've got I think I've got the fission stuff pretty well in hand at this point. Now, I'm going to go to the nether. If I come back and my base is gone, I will know that that was a lie. But... <laughs> I'm hopeful. <laughs> well, I'm hopeful. Just make sure your turbine doesn't fill up with energy because then it backs up and everything goes boom. Yes. No, I put a it's I'm not even storing the energy it makes. It's literally oh, from I day see. one has been making it like literally voiding energy. Oh yeah, it is. Rorax wants me to go to the nether and she's very excited to see that happen. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go to the nether, I'm gonna turn off my reactor and then I'm gonna go to the nether. <laughs> I can uh, I can stay here for you if you'd like me to keep an eye on it. I mean, if you want, you don't have to. If you if you no, want to, if you need to go, sure, Rorax, sure. I believe everything you say all the time. I need a shorter path than the Nether. That's what I ultimately need. I'm gonna put a chest here and eject your colonium pellets. If that's all right. Um, nah, just leave it. I'll take this anyway. Yeah. Also, keep an eye on that okay. nuclear waste barrel. I need to do something with that nuclear waste. So the waste that gets made from polonium pellets is different from the waste from the reactors, right? Yeah, there's vent waste and then radioactive waste. Right. Oh, yeah, that's why 
Yeah, they, they, I don't think they can go into the same barrel. Yeah, so what is that stuff used for? Anything or just like let it sit around, do nothing? That's it? Yeah, it has to sit there and slowly go away over time. Where is your waste going? Uh, directly into the solar, dude. Ancient underscore. Yeah, but where is the... Um... Oh, yeah, right, okay. I thought... Oh, spent waste is only from the reaction chamber, right? Did I type on that or something? Does it not have a tag? Okay, you're out of fuel. Um, where where is your fuel production? Mm. Ancient debris is that what's called in the Nether? Yep. That's the ore generation version of it. I'm wondering if it doesn't have a tag, and if that's the case. What if I did this? New mod ID Minecraft? No, because I don't want netherrack. Right. I'm going to have to think of a sneaky way to make this happen. I might... You know what I think is I'm going to need Ancient Debris in my inventory before I can add it. Ancient Debris is like super low Y level, right? Isn't that how it works? Alright, we will be back in a minute, YouTube audience, when I am done mining for a moment. Whoa, that's a, that's a lava. That's a lava. Be right back. Yep. Wow, I just found some already. That is beautiful. I just found some ancient debris. Literally, as I was heading down to a deep Y level to find some, I ran into it. Like, right ran into it. That is about as lucky as you can get, right? Pretty lucky. Took You're me so very long. lucky, sir. I know, I know. I, I still haven't found any, except all the, all the uh, netherite bits in Soren's walls. Oh, did he Sorin. make, did he get a bunch? I think, I think he duped a bunch, yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, I'm going to digital miner it, which is also pretty cheesy, but... <laughs> Assuming somebody hasn't already digitally mined it from here, but we'll find out. No one's taken my free netherite or polonium from my junk chest. Well, there's some here, so that's cool. Yay for ancient debris. Now, I should probably math this out, but I can enrichment chamber it into two netherite scrap. Or I can crush it into three dirty netherite scrap, which can then one to one. So I can triple this with a crusher, it looks like. That would probably be the most efficient route. Triple it with a crusher. And that'll get me 45, 48 of them. And that should be enough for a suit of armor. Cool. Meet you guys back at the base. All right, guys, it actually looks like we're hitting the wrapping up point for the episode here. So I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to process the netherite, and then we will come back next episode, make the mechanism body armor, get some upgrades for it so we can have things like flight and a few other things. It looks like I'm also going to need antimatter if I want flight, if I want creative mode flight. There's a jetpack flight that doesn't need antimatter, and it looks like there's a creative mode style flight that does. Is that right, Cyanide? Yes. Woohoo, I knew things. Um, so then we'll figure that out next episode, but then we'll have like a really nice armor system, uh, with some really cool run speed upgrades and all that stuff. Uh, but for now, Dire Wolf 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and have more fun playing with this cool mod. I'm really enjoying Mechanism's new features, like the fission reactor and the turbine and all that stuff is super cool. Um, I just need more uranium to, you know, get things and stuff, but we'll get there. For now, guys, take it easy.